Hey everyone, welcome back. So I said I'd be following up with an authentic video and it's probably a bit sooner than I thought, but hey, you guys seem to really enjoy that video and I'm keen to not leave you in a limbo state where you might be using OAuth 2.0 with authentic for some applications that support it, but still having to fall back to something like Authelia for all of the apps that don't. So today we're going to bridge that divide and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be in a position to completely replace Authelia. Now, that's not a dig at Orthelia. Orthelia is a cool product, but I'm taking you on a maturity journey. So Orthelia does what it does and it does it well, but Authentic gives you more access to enterprise technologies. And eventually, who knows, we might get onto something like Keycloak. Shh, we'll keep that secret for another day. So to get this working in exactly the same way that Orthelia does, i.e. it's a piece of middleware on the proxy that sits between the user trying to access it and the service that they want to access, You'll see it before where you get the splash screen and it says to log in with Orthelia. That's what we're going to create here with Authentic. And it operates in pretty much the same way. We're going to need to do some tweaks to our existing traffic config. We'll get that up and running. Once that's up and running, we'll need to go into Authentic itself and do a little bit of configuration. That's through the web GUI. And finally, we will need to append some traffic labels to any container we want to use this service. And that's exactly the same way that you need to do it with Orthelia, with those traffic labels at the bottom. So this won't be a long video. I'll take you through all of the steps needed to change your existing setup. And as always, I'll have these config files available on my GitHub that you'll just need to tweak for your setup. So the first thing that we need to do is to change the Docker Compose file for our authentic deployment. And this is to get it to run through the traffic proxy itself. So that means that it's going to handle all of the SSL decryption and it's also going to give us a nice domain name to work with, something like authentic.yourdomain.com. So let's go through this quickly and make those necessary changes. Handily, all of the changes that we need to make are attributed to the server container. The first thing we need to do is to give the server container a name. So here you can see I've called it authentic server. We'll come on to why that's important later on, but it's to do with the traffic middleware that we're gonna to have to set up. And if you saw my CrowdSec video, it's the exact same scenario. The next part is to delete the ports that are assigned to this container because we're gonna be routing this through traffic, so we don't need to expose the ports. Because we're exposing it through traffic, we're gonna to have to add it to the proxy network, and you can see that here. We're gonna add all of the labels that we've added in all of my previous videos to this container. So this will expose it on my network on authentic.jimsgarage.co.uk. I'm exposing it on port 9000, which if you remember in my previous video, I changed due to a conflict. Because we're running this now through the traffic proxy, we don't have that conflict. So do remember to go to your .m file, and I had a section here at the top which changed the HTTP and HTTPS ports, I've simply deleted those now. So they will go back to their defaults. Once you've done that, obviously add the network section to the bottom and specify that this is an external network because it's created outside of this Docker Compose file. And the last thing to do to make sure that this all works seamlessly is to go to each container in here and make sure it's put onto the proxy network. That means that all of the containers are going to be able to talk to each other on the same network. Once you've done that, you need to go and force recreate this container or delete it and spin it up again, whichever way you prefer. And hopefully once you've done that, and do remember to go and add the DNS entry into your DNS resolver, you should be able to reach this on authentic.yourdomain.com. And that's going to be really important for a future step. But before we do that, we need to make a change to traffic itself. So let's head over to the traffic configuration files and make those changes. So in my setup, my traffic configuration files are stored in the slash docker slash traffic folder. And the file we're interested in changing is the config.yaml file. So if we open this up, you might already have a middleware here for CrowdSec Bouncer. And that's because that's doing a similar thing. It's intercepting all the traffic that goes through the proxy, acting as a middleware, and then doing something off the back of that. And that's exactly how this is going to work with Authentic, and it's a similar way that Orthelia works. So you need to copy in this middleware here, and I've called it Middlewares Authentic, and it's gonna to point to your Authentic server on port 9000. 
Now this is the reason here why we called our server authentic underscore server. That's because remember, Docker can resolve DNS names based on container names, which is a really handy feature. Otherwise, you could put in your full DNS name that you're gonna create once you've spun this up through traffic, but I recommend you just leave it as it is on screen. So once you've copied this, you need to save it. And again, you need to force redeploy traffic to pick up this new configuration. So with both those services now redeployed, let's check that the changes took effect. We'll start off in traffic first by checking the traffic dashboard to make sure that the middleware was picked up properly. So over on my traffic dashboard, you can see here that the middlewares for authentic have been picked up and it's an app file because we specified it within a configuration file. Everything looks to be good. It's got a success status, so we're ready to go. And as you can see, I've already attributed it to a router. We'll come on to that in a moment. So now we've confirmed that that's working, we should now be able to head back into Authentic, but with a fully qualified domain name. Let's see that in action now. So now when I head to authentic.jimsgarage.co.uk, we get it through the browser and we're using our traffic and we've got a valid SSL certificate. Excellent. This makes life so much easier than having to remember IPs and ports. So I'm going to log in with the credentials I set up in the previous video. And once I'm logged in, there's a couple of changes we need to make. Now, do remember, if you're using this for Portainer, as we set up in the last video, this is no longer going to work. You're going to have to make some tweaks, but thankfully, those tweaks are straightforward. And hopefully, you've figured out what we're going to need to change. In the previous video, we were accessing this via an IP and a port, but now we're accessing it through a fully qualified domain name. So that's the change you need to make. To do that, it's really straightforward. And by the end of those changes, you'll be able to do something like this. Click Portainer and simply log in. You'll find the changes that you need to make in the provider section under the Portainer provider. And handily, because we've redeployed this now using this URL, it's automatically updated all the fields that we need. So if you go back into Portainer and remember where the OAuth settings were, you just need to update every reference to the IP and port instead to authentic.yourdomain.com. And it should all work fine. The only thing you do need to tweak is the redirect URI now needs to be the fully qualified domain name for Portainer. And over in Portainer, you need to change that redirect URI as well to your Portainer address, which if you can remember is this field here. So all of those should be authentic. And this one here should be Portainer, i.e. the address that Portainer is hosted on so that when you pass authentication, you're passed back to Portainer. Great, let's get back onto configuring now the web proxy. So what we need to create is what we can see on screen here, this domain forward auth provider. Now to do that, you need to click create, you need to click proxy provider, hit next, and then we're gonna to need to fill in some of these blanks. So the first thing we need to do is give it a name. I've just called this domain forward auth provider, and we need to give it an authorization flow we're going to give it explicit again, the same in the last example. And then in the next section, you would think this would need to be a proxy, but it's actually going to be a forward auth for the domain level. And as you can read on screen, that means it's going to act for every application that is on your root domain, which is pretty awesome. And that's how Authelia works. So scrolling down, we need to fill in the authentication URL, which should be pre-populated is the FQDN of Authentic itself. And we need to give it a cookie domain. Now, this is your root domain. So in my case, it's jimsgarage.co.uk. It'll be whatever your root domain is. So with that created, go ahead and hit finish. And that will dump you back onto this page. Now, I've already completed the assignment of this. So yours will say with a warning symbol here that it's not assigned. Don't worry, that's exactly the same as in the last video. We'll fix that in a moment. The next step is to go to your applications. And just like we did with Portainer, we need to create a new application that is tied to that provider. So again, straightforward. We hit create and we need to fill out some of the names. So for this one, I'm gonna call it the domain forward auth provider, just to keep it simple. And the provider 
is going to be the domain forward auth provider that we just created. So now that will get rid of the orange little symbol that you had before and it will assign it to this application. So once you've created that, you should be able to now head back to your providers and it will be attributed here and it will no longer have that issue. You'll have a green tick. Great, we're nearly there. Just a couple more steps, I promise. The last thing we need to do is go to the outposts. Now we haven't been here before and we need to create what you can see on screen. So let's hit create. We're gonna give it a name and we're gonna give it a type which has come up as proxy, which is correct. We'll leave the integration as blank, the dashes. And the bit that's a bit confusing here and it's not very obvious, you need to click this to use it. Once that's done, make sure you scroll down here and make sure that it points to your domain name and not an IP import. So make sure it looks something like this. And then you wanna hit create. Once that's created, it should look something like this. And if you haven't done it right, that providers bit here will be blank. So go back, double check, make sure you click on that provider. And that's it. That's all of the configuration steps we need to have it working. The final step is now to specify a container to actually go and use this service. And thankfully, we can do that in just one line. So I'm gonna use an example of an Nginx container, just a web server, and we're gonna drive it through authentic web proxy authentication. So let's go and do that now. So on screen, you can see that I've opened up my Nginx Docker Compose file. And we've used this example before in previous videos. But the key line that we need to add now is highlighted. And if you look at it closely, you can see that on the Nginx secure router, we've added a middleware called middlewares authentic at file. And if you cast your mind back to our traffic, you can see that this is the one that we created in the traffic config.yaml. So that all looks good. So what you need to do now is force recreate that Nginx container. And when you do, it should come up and ask you to authenticate before you can view the page. So in my instance, that's nginx.jimsgarage.co.uk. So I'll redeploy that now and I'll load up that web page and hopefully we should hit authentic and be asked to log in first. So I've opened up an incognito tab just to make sure there's no funky caching going on. And I recommend you do the same for any sort of testing with web proxies and authentication. It can become a complete mess with caching. I'm gonna hit return. It's gonna take me straight to authentic. That's exactly what we wanted and exactly what we would expect with something like Orthelia. Let's log in now. We're gonna then be asked to enter a password. When we click continue, it's logged us in and we're all getting rickrolled. Excellent. Yeah, we're still getting rickrolled in 2023. But there we go, we have it. We have Authentic now configured with OAuth 2.0 and web proxies for any of the services you have that don't support OAuth 2.0. So there we go. I told you it was gonna be a quick video and you got a bonus rickroll as well. So everybody's happy. So hopefully now you're in a position where you could replace Orthelia if you wanted to and you'd have a platform that supports OAuth 2.0 and web proxy authentication for all the apps that don't support that. And in future videos, we will be moving on to Keycloak. I'm really keen to see what features that has as it's Red Hat supported, it's probably the biggest open source identity and access provider out there. And from everything I've seen, it ticks every box. So as ever, thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.